and I think we should be like, yeah. Sorry, I, I was telling Amrita, I have like thousand different tabs open because I'm writing right now. So it's just making the laptop run really slow. And we should be good now. Yeah, I think we're live. Can you see it? I mean, it says yeah. it's Okay, yeah. Live. There was supposed to be a heading or whatever. Can we see the recording? Is it happening? Yeah. Yeah. yeah? Okay. Yeah. Okay. We are there. <laughs> this is okay. I got the yes from up here. <laughs> so we are like, all right, golden. Okay. Hi. Welcome everybody. And also to anybody who's tuned in live to watch uh, yet another part of the celebration of five years of STEM peers. And today we are going to talk about Club Sairai, which has been in the news a lot lately for a lot of good reasons, right? So we are going to listen to some of the members who have had who played a role in this global outreach of Club Sairai. But before I hand it over to you all, just very briefly, um, Club Sairai was formed in 2016, right? And the idea was to uh, create blog posts or science communication in a way one to bridge the gap between different scientific communities and also between the sciences and the society at large. And over the years, you guys have covered a lot of different topics. There has been a business healthcare blog, Menace. You've talked about uh, patents and intellectual properties. And the best thing that I really love is that each blog comes with this wonderful graphic design or illustrations. So along with a great team of editors and writers, we also have a very talented bunch of illustrators. Uh, in making such wonderful posts and informing the scientific society at large about different aspects of science. And I'm not going to talk anymore. So we today we have uh, Rupsha, Amrita, Shorcho, Sumul, Gaurav, and Disha, and they are going to be taking it over now. So over to you guys. Hi, everyone. Um... Thank, uh, we are super happy to be here uh, and I'm going to try to share um, the slide deck. Yeah, can you see now? Not yet, no. Yes? Yeah, not yet. Yes. Yeah? It's up. Yep. Yes. Uh, so, Club Sairai, um, as Shohini nicely summarized, um, what, okay, I'm trying to move to the next slide. There. Um, uh, is a science communication platform. Um, which covers popular science uh, and stories on lives of STEM professionals. Um, so Kopsara has had over uh, 260,000 views since its inception in 2016 and is accessed in over 100 countries. Uh, in 2016, uh, when it started out, it started as a blog that was set up by um, Abhi and Ananda. And uh, the idea was very much to give a platform for scientists to connect as well as connect with the society uh, at large. And um, uh, that's when it first started, it generated a lot of enthusiasm and um, lots of posts started coming in. Um, and um, it, it slowly grew organically. Uh, got it became more organized. There were a set of editors who came in. Uh, in 2017, Madness was introduced, which was a healthcare, um, healthcare uh, uh, newsletter uh, with a business perspective. Um, and slowly uh, Club Sairai started 
making uh, meaningful connections with um, with different organizations uh, across the world. And in 2018 came such a connection with the Breakout Labs, which is um, a Peter Thiel Foundation um, fund uh, who help um, early, uh, um, who help uh, uh, fund early stage um, uh, companies. Uh, so that was a very fruitful collaboration between uh, Club Sarai and uh, break Breakout Labs. And then came the connect with The Wire uh, India, where uh, some of our articles got cross-posted in The Wire, drawing a bigger audience. Uh, in 2019, we um, uh, ran a five-part uh, series survey uh, on uh, women in science. Uh, the CSG Women in Science group had con uh, conducted a survey which involved over 200 participants. And uh, the survey was about uh, challenges of women scientists um, and uh, recommendations for um, how things could be made better at their workplace. So this was a very extensive and comprehensive survey, survey that we published. Uh, then uh, we also had the privilege of um, conducting an internship uh, with a high school student who, um, who uh, co contacted us to um, uh, improve his writing skills. And um, he went on to publish a blog at Club Sarai. And uh, there was also the STEM Pierce Fellowship that was introduced uh, where Argo Manna um, brought in his um, beautiful art and uh, he and um, in 20 and we've been growing so in 2020 uh, through a fairly rigorous selection process um, Shoujo, Amrita and uh, Sumbul joined us as editors uh, it was rigorous because there were so many people interested in uh, becoming editors at Club Sarai. And um, one of the criterion was that our editors had to be able to write for the general audience as well. And um, so uh, we started out by uh, publishing articles by the editors. And over uh, the course of the last few months, we have made some more connections. And um, so, uh, some of them are um, listed here. So um, uh, we covered two uh, wonderful interviews, one uh, of, with Susanna Harris of PhD Balance. Uh, PhD Balance is a forum that uh, addresses mental health in academia. And uh, then we had a two-part series um, interview of Fanuel Mundi, who is an inspirational leader and the founder of the STEM, uh, STEM Advocacy Institute, so that should be STEM Advocacy Institute, not science, sorry. And um, uh, then um, Amrita happened to be a co-organizer of the ComSciCon um, science communication workshops. So through them, we've also, um, uh, through Amrita, we've made connections with ComSciCon. And I think the fe uh, feather in our cap was really when uh, the Genetic Society of America recognized us as a science writing resource. Uh, additionally, we've um, revived our YouTube channel uh, to promote uh, uh, science communication in more visual forms, and um, and we are go we have we we have uh, two interns who will be joining us this year, and uh, so through all this, there's been a lot of uh, lots of volunteers, lots of different editors who've worked tirelessly to make this all happen. And um, the illustrators have been our backbone. And I think this is the, the um, club side I look or feel is largely um, because of this, because of the uh, special uh, this art and design that we have, and it's very high quality, and we are really uh, happy to have this um, created uh, community with us and to help them grow. And uh, there are many more exciting collaborations in the works, uh, but I'd like to highlight uh, two 
three people uh, who have uh, played a very uh, important role in raising the bar of um, the kind of content we had. And uh, the first person is uh, Ananya. She's a PhD student and a science writer who most of you following Club Sarah I would know. So she's written, she can write almost on any topic that's given to her, but uh, she um, uh, started writing a few hist history and science pieces for us. And now she's evolved to writing about anything uh, at all, but her articles are a joy to read. And uh, Orgo Manna, who is an artist, researcher, and a journalist. Um, uh, and he uh, came in to Club Therai last year around the same time that Ananya started writing for us. And um, Orgo uh, and Ananya both share uh, interest in the history of science. So they collaborated and came up with a wonderful series of articles. Uh, and um, having these um, articles really uh, boosted um, our, uh, they, they really brought us to a good place because then we started getting noticed more. But um, the other person uh, who I'd like to mention is Malini Pitak, who is a, world, a wildlife photo journalist. Um, and Malini has been um, providing us um, uh, like uh, field studies and she's a, one amazing writer and she's been taking us to different parts of the world uh, highlighting um, endangered species and uh, challenges wildlife face at different in different places that she goes to uh, so these people have really um, uh, made wonderful contributions to Club Sarah and we're so grateful to them for that um, and uh, I think um, uh, our, our standing in the Science Communication Society was kind of validated, so to speak, um, when we were recognized as a um, science communication resource among all the big wig uh, SciCom uh, groups. Um, and uh, this was uh, our, a few last month. And um, so this is, uh, here is the team that has been working in 2020. Um, so that's Amrita, Sumbul, Soja, me, and the illustrators are Orgo, Disha, Saurabh, and Prabhu, but we have a lot of others in the team. Uh, but these people have been uh, special, have been active in 2020 so far. And um, it makes us immensely proud to see uh, people who've been part of Club Sairai go on to forge their own paths and careers in science communication. And um, here, um, is, uh, here are examples of uh, those who have done exactly that. So Shomdatta is now the Science uh, Communication and Public Outreach Officer at CCMB. Uh, Ipsha, who all of you would, have, would know uh, at STEM peers, has uh, created an immense, um, uh, sh she's, she's a force of nature and she's, uh, her art is fabulous and um, check her out at Ipsa Wonders. Vinita is, has uh, her unique um, uh, way of presenting science and it combines humor and art and she, she has um, been growing fuzzy synapse with uh, and, and comes up with beautiful content. And um, Ritu Parna uh, led uh, Club Sairai in 2018, and she is a um, scientific editor at Selfress uh, and also runs her own blog called The, Seren the Serendipity Brain. And uh, Arunima was a, is a now an associate editor at Nature Med. So we're really proud of. Um, having all of them at Club Sairai and uh, to see that uh, they've grown in so many ways uh, since Club Sairai. And um, we, for the next steps, um, we have some exciting um, uh, articles uh, that we have um, uh, lined up. And we have a series on Carl Sagan called Cosmos um, and by Shubhavrata Ghosh, who is a 
journalist who's written for the New York Times and BBC, and he found out about us and decided he wanted to share his articles with us. So we were really excited about that. And we have two interns from St. Xavier's College, Mumbai, and we have more collaborations there with undergraduates. And this will be announced soon on STEM peers. And we're also uh, formulating the idea of holding science writing boot camp camps or write-a-thon events um, and open that up to universities, high schools, and, um, and for PhDs. And please connect with us at sairai2016 at gmail.com and follow us on Twitter at PubSairai. We also have uh, we are also pre present uh, at LinkedIn and Facebook, and um, yeah, we we'd love to have people uh, reach out to us and um, take our message forward and keep helping us grow. And I'm gonna stop right there. <laughs> I can't hear you. I'm I muted myself. <laughs> it was absolutely amazing. I'm just blown away by everything and then whatever is in store for the future, like everything that you just mentioned. There's so much to look forward to. This is kudos to you all. Wonderful. This is absolutely wonderful. It's very exciting. For sure, for sure. And I'm 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 looking forward to the series, uh, the Cosmos series. That sounds so exciting. So do we want to have like a round of introduction so that everybody knows who you all, so everybody knows who you all are? Yeah, so do you wanna start with um, Amrita? Um, hi everyone. So uh, you all, you all have been hearing about uh, Club Sairai, and I think I'm really fortunate to be associated with this platform. So I am a fifth-year PhD student at the Baylor College of Medicine. So my, uh, I, I'm affiliated with the genetics department, and my uh, project is on trying to understand the underlying biology of uh, how to treat hearing loss. And I have a very supportive advisor because of which I've been able to like try so many different things. And it was just about like two years ago that I realized science communication is something that I enjoy doing. It's like effortless. And I always seem to have time to do science communication. So I started getting involved with a lot of uh, different kinds of platforms, like which, which does science communication at like different levels, like writing, podcasting, going to like schools, talking to K-12 students and so on. So with a little bit of all that experience, I applied to be like an editor at Club Sire because I've never had any kind of editorial experience. And over these many months that I've been associated with uh, a wonderful editor-in-chief and wonderful set of editors working alongside me, I think uh, it's been a great learning experience personally. Uh, I have learned a lot working with uh, people who are writing and like the illustrators. And uh, it's, it's, it's a great platform and I'm so happy that uh, I, I'm here doing what I'm doing with all these wonderful people. That's wonderful, Amrita. Uh, so, do you hey. want to go on? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm Simbal. Um, so, I've done my PhD. I did it from uh, IT Kanpur. Then I've also finished my postdoc from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. And I always think that science should not be limited to scientists. And that's why I am very much uh, dedicated to science communication efforts throughout uh, my tenure, uh, my student and my uh, postdoc tenure. But with that uh, aim in mind, I wanted to join Club Sire because they were doing such, you know, such great work. And it's important that uh, society should be connected to science because uh, it, a scientific spirit is very important for a progressive society as it inculcates logical thinking within the society. And I think by making it more translatable that we are doing at uh, Club Side Eye, uh, even people who are not scientists can understand uh, the details. And I think that's very really the most exciting part of this. Uh, and apart from Club Sarai, I also write and I'm an editor at Silo Street Stories, where we do a series for women in science. So it kind of um, neatly merges my interests 
in science outreach and science communication in general. And I'm really, really excited for the future of Club Sci-Fi. As Rupra had outlined, we have uh, many exciting things coming up and I'm really excited about that. All right. I can go now. Uh, I mean, I guess Sumbul and Amrita kind of encapsulated the, the sentiment of all, uh, all the editors at Club Side. I, by, by the way, I'm Shorjo. Uh, uh, I guess I need to introduce uh, me first. So I was a PhD student at uh, the University of Chicago studying um, RNA biochemistry. And I uh, joined my postdoc early last year uh, at uh, Harvard Medical School. Uh, and I actually, the topic of my research is kind of pop science-y anyway. So I'm trying to recreate life from basic chemistry in lab, uh, which is one of the reasons that I chose this topic for my postdoc was it was so easy to talk to people about what I do. It would always fascinate them, uh, irrespective of what actual science I was doing in the lab. Uh, but anyway, uh, so I, I, I learned about uh, this uh, application uh, uh, sort of call for application in Club Sarai. And I used to follow Club Sarai quite a, quite a bit, uh, but then when I saw this, I was like, you know, I did, I edited a, a science magazine when I was in my undergrad in uh, St. Xavier's College, Kolkata, it was called Pebbles. And after that, I kind of got swept up into, you know, academics a little bit. I, my pri primary interest was in poetry. I kept on writing poetry, but I didn't really sort of uh, marry the, my love for words with my love for science uh, it, during that phase. So when I saw this call for application, I thought that this was the, the best opportunity for me to get back uh, into uh, sort of science communication. I did a bit of science communication in my PhD when I realized uh, that was when I started reading Richard Dawkins for the first time, those early PhDs. And I realized how important science communication, science itself was not enough to uh, sort of uh, remove and eliminate the, science, the, the, the dogma that exists, uh, the superstitions dogma that exists in society. So I think science communication is absolute necessity to sort of make sure, make it very clear why, why science works, how science works, and what scientists do essentially. So that was my one of my primary motivators. And uh, the last year that I've worked with Rupsha and Sumbul and Amrita and the editorial team, they have been, they are wonderful writers themselves and Great, great to work with. And I've just really enjoyed sort of cutting, trimming sentences to make it look better. This has been my passion for a long time. I'm really looking forward to making uh, Club Sari a much, a much better and a wider uh, sort of uh, organization in the future. Thanks. Cutting, trimming sentences, I like that. <laughs> okay. Saurav and Disha, you guys want to go next? Yeah. Thank you, Pani. Uh, so I'm Disha Chauhan, and I did my PhD from University of Yeda, which is situated in Spain. And after finishing my PhD, I came back to India and did my postdoc at the TIFR. And my PhD was in neuroscience, so I was always fascinated by neurobiology, mostly the developmental neurobiology. And after working some time, uh, switching the postdoc, I realized uh, that I'm very much exhausted by the research right now, and I needed a break. It was some health situation as well, but uh, so then I started doing, uh, exploring all other things. I thought all this years that the research is the one thing that I uh, want to do, and that's just one uh, part of my life. So then I started working with uh, different kinds of mediums, and illustration work came in in between. And then I realized that I would really like to express science through illustration because I always feel that what can be said as simplified, uh, as in simplified illustration, that is the most easiest way to express the science or uh, make and even understand the mechanisms behind anything, any process or any phenomena that is existing. Apart from that, I have always been interested, I was always interested in natural history and I did a course for that. And yeah, since uh, I have been part of the uh, CSD with the system kit, which was earlier CSD. So when I got an opportunity there, I really grabbed it because this is something which I realized that I really want to do for a long time. Saurabh. Hello, everyone. Uh, I am Saurabh. Uh, I did my PhD from NITGS, 
do you want to do you want to like just talk i mean we know you all but do you still want to go ahead and introduce yeah. yourself <laughs> yeah um so um uh, just a brief uh, background about myself so i did my phd at the um, institute of molecular pathology in vienna um, uh, on histone modifications um then i moved on to um UCSF Gladstone Institute for a short postdoc, and then um, to uh, the University of Cambridge um, for a longer postdoc uh, at, at, in UK. And uh, my, my life was totally caught up in research. I was completely uh, part of academia in, in the whole publishing uh, experiment kind of uh, lifestyle that many of you have. Uh, but um, during all that uh, time, I, I really um, missed um, writing and um, uh, the, the way I, I used to uh, get my dose of writing was through helping people in the lab with their manuscripts and um, uh, and, and yeah, I, I absolutely loved uh, being in academia, but also at some point I realized that uh, I enjoy uh, working with manuscripts a little better because uh, give, I get to work on many different topics that way. And during all this, um, I uh, realized that I did, nothing I did connected me with the society and uh, I there was no re I didn't know where to start and uh, this is uh, when Club Sairai happened um, it really opened up a new world for me because um, uh, it, it, it gave me um, the first uh, view to how um, we as scientists uh, have a responsibility towards uh, bringing our science out to the society, as well as um, I, I, I almost feel now working with high school students and with PhDs in helping them write, uh, PhDs get so uh, specialized and so caught up in jargon, it's almost easier to have work with high school students. Uh, um, but the focus is different, of course. Uh, but I do think uh, as we get trapped in our world of academia, uh, it becomes harder and harder to connect with uh, people and speak the same language. And um, uh, this is where uh, we try to bridge the gap with Club Sarai. And, um, um, and and be apart from uh, just bringing out the science, there's uh, this whole angle of uh, bringing out stories on the lives of people who have um, uh, who are uh, either in academia or uh, have moved on to do 
other things um, and that's that's a very important aspect because we see where wh what where people come from and um, uh, what drives them and what makes them um, drives them to do different things and um, how we all of us pretty much started out at the same point but all the options that there are out there and um, uh, it's, it's a story of resilience as well and um, we we do um, meet a lot of uh, inspirational people uh, through this platform and um, and uh, I think it what it, it's about how each one of us as editors or those who want to be involved as writers uh, mold this uh, platform to meet their own purpose in growing towards whatever uh, uh, they whatever kind of connect they want to have so it's it's giving that space yeah, so, so it's, 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 and Abhi and Ananda have been uh, amazing in the sense of the amount of support they give and freedom uh, in whatever, um, and, and helping us connect with different like-minded organizations. So, uh, and, and I think uh, Club Sairai reflects to some extent what STEM Pierce is about. Uh, and it's about this whole community, which uh, is in many senses selflessly helping each other out. And, um, and, and we're happy to see people uh, uh, find their own niche and move forward with their, uh, with things they enjoy doing. And um, uh, yeah, and I think Club Sarah in that regard, uh, it, it has also, uh, grown from this kind of garage, backyard, homegrown project to a more um, global entity. And now we have to start becoming mindful of our content and what we present and that it's not, that it's inclusive to a broader community, that it's not um, restricted to one country and that we uh, talk about uh, and, and and what uh, just recently um, uh, Fanuel's um, um, uh, interview uh, resonated with somebody in Sao Paulo, Brazil, which is just incredible. Uh, and I think that's really these are the kind of connections and um, uh, uh, and 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 um, uh, it, it, it's it's about reaching out to people where we wouldn't imagine we'd ever reach out to and it's it's um that that really is motivating and exciting um and um it's uh yeah so this is this is why uh having this space and platform and helping it grow and to have um people who are all um enthusiastic and on the same page about the goals of where we are going um, makes it all the more fun to work in. Absolutely, that's uh, that's very true. Like the, what you said about all the platform, STEM as a whole, and all these different initiatives has just helped so many people, as you said, find their niche, and that's that's very true. But I'm going to go back to something you mentioned about PhDs being so jargon and everything. And I like being a PhD student myself, I know that because I'm always only reading about papers related to my work to the point like it the saturation level that where you don't want to read. And like I at least read where I was like, I don't want to read anything to do with science anymore because I want that break. But the posts from Club Sairai, they are so different they talk about science but in a way it's a very interactive way through the illustrations and the way it's written so do you guys want to talk about some of your favorite works that's been published that you guys have worked on that you were very proud of or you were just happy to work on those i'm sure there are almost everything that you worked on you guys have liked but do you have any favorites among those that you'd want to discuss so any? my involvement with club sarai has been since 
2018, I was an editor. So I have worked on so many different projects. Right. Uh, I mean, uh, that that I, I can't really pick one over the other. But as I mentioned, um, Ananya and Malini have brought in a very fresh perspective and um, that uh, having people like that uh, who also, uh, and, and Ananya is a PhD student, but right, but she knows that she wants to forge a career in science writing. So it's, it's um, people who, and um, it's just fantastic to meet such people and provide that space and the, uh, and have art that can complement that the writing, and so that's that's where uh, uh, once a post is published and you see this beautiful work coming together, that for me is the biggest sense of achievement for every post, really. And um, uh, I think con we've uh, been so lucky uh, to have so many people uh, be interested in Kotsera um, and. So I, I yeah so I'll let the others comment but they are, they haven't been long enough to co have uh, covered many articles but I'm sure they can tell you about how it is to work with writers and illustrators and what they enjoy about the process. Sure, um, I can speak a little bit. <laughs> like again, picking a favorite is not easy um, because or some, like, like not just one. Yeah, you can multiple ones <laughs> or all yes. of them. <laughs> but yeah, but uh, speaking of what makes like the strengths of what makes for a good uh, article in this kind of a platform, I would pick Ananya Sain's article because I think she has a very good balance of um, simplifying the science, but yet giving enough details for the person who is really interested in the science as well. So you have to be simple enough so that it draws you into the story and then give all the details that are required so that it doesn't look like it's like fluffy piece. It's like act based on actual facts that, uh, you know, scientists have done research on. So I think that's a very important point and like anybody who's listening who wants to get into this kind of writing should, uh, you know, focus on those aspects. And the other very important part, as um, you have and Rutra have pointed out, art is the artwork. So artwork is super important because, again, it draws a person into the story and it gives you a gist of the entire thing. So even if you don't remember all the words, if you remember the artwork, and, you know, we are visual people, human beings are very visual people, and it uh, makes a lasting imprint on your brain so you know a lot of um, uh, popular science articles that i have read that you know sticks to me is with a good artwork so we've been really fortunate to have such people uh, working with us including um nisha and saurabh and arga and you know all the other artists we have but um, i'm also very uh, i also love the history of things so the history of science uh, series that we did like i wasn't involved with that side right then but the history of science with Arga and Ananya that they carried out, that was a really, really informative and exciting series. But that's just my own personal choice because I love the history of all things. Yeah, so I think those are two crucial aspects, like best way of simplifying science and good artwork that kind of merges the science with art. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I can... Uh, from my experience last year, uh, editing articles, I can, instead of sort of picking uh, a best or a favorite article, I can probably maybe, because I worked with these articles through across several iterations, I could probably identify some of the common themes that I think made it so that these articles, first of all, got into the platform and ultimately, I think, were effective articles. Um, before that, I would like to say that any of any one of you that have, that have written anything in life, you you realize that the 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 hardest thing about writing is putting the first few words down. When you're staring at a blank screen, that's a that's a that's a very scary prospect. Uh, so the good thing about being an editor is that you have a bunch of words on your screen, and you have the ideas right there. So all you need to do is to sort of tweak around and make it look better. So that's a very easy easy part of writing. But uh, of editing, but when you go through the article and you sort of identify the common theme, just like Sumbul said, I think, and this is this might seem very intuitive to a lot of people, but it's surprising that it's not very common knowledge for most people that are trying to write 
science communication or popular science articles is that it's i think the common theme maybe if i can pick three common themes from all the articles that we have published is one it has to be it has to have a focus uh, because in a lot of times when we are starting out writing we want to put as much as information as we know on the article which basically creates a sort of a flat surface where we have a lot of points but we don't have any pattern that is arising from those points so that's a problem for anyone who's you have to imagine who the readers of these articles are they probably look at it for 5 minutes and then they move on because this is the internet age you know where cat videos are more popular than science articles so uh, that's one thing you have to be very focused on all of the articles if you look at them they have a common theme that really stands out so that's what makes them so good and again the second part is again cut cut the jargon it's so easy because in biology anyone who is a biologist would know that all these proteins have these weird three letter four letter names with numbers at the end uh, it's like no one knows what these mean honestly so the the so the, the the core that you can go the deeper that you can go and understand the science i think yourself this is the difference between science writing and any other kind of writing is that you have to really understand the science very well so that you can go to the absolute depth and then sort of dig back the concepts and represent them in a more reader friendly way and all of these articles have done that and we've been very fortunate as scientists ourselves to sort of make things more clear as we go along and i mean i guess the third point is uh you have to have a story it, it, and ananya sen's articles that i i did mention it to her as well is very conversational uh which is where you basically take the reader through a journey where you basically have these directions like exit enter these arrows that force the readers to take the path that you want them to take without wandering off into territories where they kind of go crazy about thinking of other stuff that you don't want them to think so that's i think a very important thing that you have to really tell a story uh and take the readers through a journey and that is always very helpful and all of these articles if you guys have a chance to reading them would uh sort of satisfy these three conditions uh, so i i hope that helps i think those are very good points this would have been one of my last questions is like what suggestions would you have for people who are aspiring writers or editors but we will again once come back to that but if anybody else wants to share some of their exciting experiences in club sarai working on a particular piece yeah. i just want to add what uh, add to what symbol and uh, sarja just said um sure. so for for me again um i don't have like a specific uh, person's piece that i really enjoy or something like that for me as an editor i mean i look at the person just like how it was say like 2 years back where i came from so when i was in the process of like getting started with science writing and i was also the same just had like a bunch of jargons had no idea how to like craft everything so what i learned and this is for anybody out there listening also is that what i was told is like for any form of science communication and this applies even to writing to a large extent you always uh, i mean i was told that you follow what is called like what is called as an hourglass model you start with something very general whatever the topic is you give your audience something very interesting like a fact or you need to make them go wow and then you're like okay you have their attention now and then you go into the specifics of that topic and include a little bit of the experiments that was done or anything technical just go into uh, minor specifics you don't have to like give them every single gene name like just what he said because it doesn't matter right so you give them that and then again just like the base of the hourglass you become like you go out more general and then you talk about what was the finding or like what are you trying to like tell them or what is the conclusion of the story and you have to give them like very clear takeaway so if the audience are like reading your article or listening to your talk and they they want to ask you a question like why should i care about this you need to give them a clear answer for that question with whatever science communication you're trying to do so this is the framework that i have been like following with the pieces that i write and i try to like guide uh submissions that i get along the same route so that if if someone has already given me that framework so it becomes very easy for me to like edit that because i feel like the framework is already there the right framework but if it's not then i try to like give my comments based on this kind of framework that i have for myself so that's something that i learned and i felt like it will be nice to like share that that said um all of this is like whether the illustrators editors writers all of this is voluntary and i think uh 
it's wonderful that you are like, I mean, I'm getting this opportunity to be between people who are doing all of this just out of interest and passion. And you cannot say that about a lot of other things that you're involved with. So that's been my experience and learning uh, so far. And I just wanted to share that here. Sure. Yeah. It's wonderful to know like your, again, from where you started and how you look at these editorial pieces or your way of working. I'm going to now talk, like I want to ask Saurabh and Disha about their, uh, how, like when you have a story, how do you build an illustration from that story? What is your thought process? Do you, how do you work through your piece? Uh, before we answer that, I would like to answer the previous question. Sure. That, uh, I am a big fan of Ananya and our close work, but apart from <laughs> that, there is one part of uh, Club Sai, right, which I think should be mentioned uh, here specifically, that was Women in Science Survey. I, I specifically want to mention that because it was like most of the articles we have like one or two illustrators or few editors and uh, the writer. But this survey was like with so many participants and how the editor, the chief editor maintained the cooperation and collaboration between all the illustrators and writers and editors, it was really fun. Like I did like one or two articles out of that because uh, there were like many more illustrators. And that was kind of like how Stempir came, all together came as a group to work on just like a bunch of articles. So that was really something I think which represents Stempir very well. So yeah, coming to the next question, yes. that how do we work on uh, what our thought process is mainly. So I think, yes. okay. So usually what we do, as soon as the article comes, we brew on it like one or two days. We just keep brewing on it that how we would like to understand that article. Because sometimes uh, the articles are not exactly from our field. And that's the good part of uh, Club Sci, right? So what we do is we break it down uh, to understand that how we would like to represent it to ourselves first. That if we are uh, reading this article, how we would like to understand it through illustration. So that it, it is uh, becoming simplified for the other people who are like reading that theme or that topic for the first time. Like uh, if it's something from uh, nanoscience and I'm from neuroscience, so I should also be able to understand. That's the basic thing which we take care of. And then comes the style, that what kind of style of illustration we are going to put in. Yeah, that's what I consider yeah. mostly. Sure. Saurabh, you want to add something? Okay. So this is what I want to know. So you have this and then you have like a back and forth between the editors and the illustrators to keep yeah. working on this article till you think that it's going to be, uh, it's meant for that broader audience who can understand who's not specializing in that kind of a field. Yeah. I would like to give another example. Like there was one article on biological clocks by and circadian rhythm mm -hmm. exactly by Arjna. And there, we didn't have to do much work because Arjna and the editor was uh, Rajamani as well there. Uh, she suggested such great ideas that our work was done. We just had to put their ideas yeah. on the paper. So that I think we we are doing our work of illustration, but most of the time it comes directly from the writers and editors themselves also. Right. That's wonderful. So you like again we saw there were lots there you had collaborations in the past with even with other like other scientific community scientific communication portals. Do you like do you have your favorites in SciCom that you all like sometimes look up to or get inspired with or you just like going and visiting them and see what their work is? Like do you have any specific other SciCom portals or websites or blogs that you're very interested in? Uh, we are we are already working for Club Sci, right? As well as we have been working for another what what science? That is a, a collaboration of Indian scientists who are working on uh, representing the research work being done in the Indian lab and uh, short form of that, like they are uh, trying to introduce the other the other people who are out of science to so that they understand that what kind of work is being done in the lab. So we enjoy that also a lot. Because I think it's very important uh, for the normal people, but normal people, but like those who are not from the scientific background, <laughs> to understand that what kind of work is done in the lab.
for outreach, which should happen in the public to enhance science. Yes, yeah, I would just mention, like, speaking of science communication and uh, outreach, I love Radio Lab. I think it's a podcast, it's not a written space, but I think any form of medium for science communication is good. And I think they, again, they do a really good job of telling a story and making it exciting and interesting for even a layperson. Like, of course, I'm a scientist, I can understand much more, but it's something that I would recommend to my family to go and listen to. Yeah, um, they have some really good ones out there, yes. Yeah, sure. right, right. So and and they, writing wise, there's so many that it's hard for me to pinpoint. <laughs> okay. I think massive science um, has many elements similar to what we do. And um, I do look them up quite often because they, I think their USP is they help scientists communicate science to the society, which um, matches with ours to a large extent. Uh, but it's also um, how, um, it, it's, it's also the storyline that's important in a, in a piece and how things are framed so that you, you don't need a thousand words to tell something. You, you, you can do the same thing in about 200 to 300 words. And uh, this is something I'd like to mention to our, um, uh, to the, to, to our prospective writers is, uh, uh, is, is to uh, potentially pitch a piece first. And then uh, that way uh, editors can, um, assess if it is of uh, uh, it is of interest to a broad it will be of interest to a broad audience or not and whether it might fit in to club Sarah because sometimes the really hard part for us is when people have written full articles and and then um, uh, and and it might be so dense or read like a review article that might not appeal to a broader audience and it's very hard to turn these people away because because often it ends up being a case where we'll have to do a lot of writing to undo a, undo a lot of um you know uh, the heaviness in the article or to frame uh, to rephrase it, reframe it so that it's um it has a focus like uh Sarja mentioned and um so i think uh, when if if uh, writers want to uh, write for Club Sarai, please uh, pitch a short, have a 200 to 300 word pitch ready, which tells us why um, why people should be interested in the piece, uh, what, um, what they're trying, uh, what the focus of the piece is, and how, what kind of story they plan to weave. Um, and uh, the storyline is absolutely important because often uh, articles like uh, sh uh, in science, it's very easy to get trapped in facts and just throw, uh, g g give a, a collection of facts out there. And that doesn't make it a article. And it's more important to provide context and lead um, a readers through uh, through the writer's mind and show them why it is exciting. And so um, I think I would encourage uh, people to reach out to us with short pitches and then we can help out and work with them in, um, uh, in draft crafting a piece uh, so that it, um, it, so that we can um, uh, work together on it. And, uh, and and the writer does most of the writing. We just uh, help guide it and make it uh, give our feedback. But um, yeah, and, and I think Club Sarah is also, uh, wh while we would like to accept most of the articles that come to us, we unfortunately aren't in a place where we can do that. Did she? I think, I think we lost our leader. I think we lost her all of a sudden. Club Sarah has been decapitated. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I hope she joins back soon. Yeah, she'll I, mean, back. I, I can I can maybe add to what Ruksha is saying, and this is personal, uh, is that I think those of you who uh, I mean obviously Club Sarah, Sarah is a place for people who want to write popular science articles, 
but for people who really also want to write better science articles, I mean, just writing uh, pop science articles would also help you write better science article is what my experience has been. Uh, because you get, again, you get that focus, you get that narr narrative structure when you write popular science articles. And then when you can apply that experience to your science article, I, I have seen a drastic difference between the articles that I have written after uh, I have written some sort of a popular science article. It just gives you so much clarity. And I have personally, this, is, this might not be popular science, but personally, I've had this very uh, interesting experience when I was writing over a weekend, I was working on uh, my third scientific article and, oh, Rupsha is back. Yeah. and uh, a short novella, which was a sort of a crime thriller. So I was writing both of these at the same time. And then I realized how much writing that crime thriller was helping me write my science article because exactly. it gives you, it makes it even, I mean, sometimes writing a science article is so difficult that sometimes we just m make sure that we get everything right and we don't bother about making it interesting anymore because it's so hard to write a science article to be absolutely accurate and technical and things like that. So I mean that also helps you make your article look read like a as much as possible read like a novel, you know. But back to Rupsha. So, sorry, my screen went blank completely <laughs> on me. I don't know why that happened. Um, yeah, no, I, I I didn't know Shoujo was right. Oh, she's gone again. <laughs> no idea what's happening. But uh, no, but you guys, uh, all of you touched on a uh, lot of things which can be takeaway messages for people who want to contribute articles uh, to Club Sinai or want to be a part of the team of Club Sinai. So thank you for that. I'm sure people will learn a lot from whatever you guys have said. Um, I will ask this one last question that how has your involvement with Club Sinai just helped in your own uh, personal, like professional development and with respect to networking or just where you like like to see yourself in the future as far as your career is concerned. So if you guys touch on that a little bit. Um, sure. So um, I think personally for me, uh, I was uh, really interested in, so I was doing a uh, women in science series already and I was writing articles, but I really wanted to uh, touch on a variety of topics and uh, being involved with Club Sarai has really helped me to, uh, you know, kind of edit uh, articles which touch upon so many topics. So one personal benefit that I derive from it is that I also learn a lot about, you know, different topics. But I think because in the long term, I want to be involved in like an editorial position and because this uh, platform is giving me a very good hands-on experience with that. Um, and I don't know what will happen in the future, but I think for me personally till now, it has been a very fulfilling experience because even like when something comes to you to edit and when you shape it and then the final product is ready, uh, you feel really happy with it. That, okay, you know, I helped it. Of course, the writers and the uh, illustrators are there, but you know, it's us, the editors, and as an editor, I am trying to shape it into this final form, but you know, so many other people are going to benefit. So I think that's one personal as well as professional benefit I see for myself. Sure. And I'm sure you've also had a chance to like, network or connect with a lot of people with all these different collaborations that you guys have had over the years or just what's in store in the future as well for you guys yeah absolutely so yeah i think it does give immense networking opportunity as well because you interact with so many um authors and also like so many institutions like fanwell is a good example because he runs the stem advocacy institute now that we engaged with him through this we have a more closer collaboration and in the future also we look forward to many more networking and collaborative efforts for sure great anybody else want to touch on that yeah i, I can i can go. i so basically i uh, right now it's very difficult to speculate on what the future would look like but right right now i am in my second year of postdoc and i have plans to pursue research in the future uh, but uh, one of the reasons why I want to uh, at least wish to stay in academia is the flexibility to work on other uh, academic stuff, which is not necessarily scientific research. Uh, and, you know, a, a dream of mine is to 
uh, write a popular science book someday. And the outline has been sitting in my computer for the last two years, <laughs> but I never got around to do anything on it. But coming back to how Club Sarai gives you networking opportunities. Uh, I have seen, I mean, I cannot, I'm a very, I'm a terrible artist myself, uh, really, really bad. But these people who are extremely, the first article, I mean, the, the article that I wrote for Club Sarai was illustrated by Orko Manna, and I was simply blown away by what he came up with. So uh, having this sort of, and if I have, if I write something and I know that I have a couple of eyes that can look over my article because I have great editors now as friends, I have great illustrators as my friends. So whenever I need to, if I want to work on my own projects in the near future, I know where I can go. And that's a great feeling of uh, camaraderie and you know resource as well. So that's, I guess, professionally. And in just in, you know, sort of a personal level, growth level aspect of it. You know, PhD as you're a PhD student yourself and postdoc research it can be kind of stressful. Uh, but when you get to work on, like you do the same thing, you sit in front of a computer, look at a bunch of text, but it's not your research. It's, it's, it's a wonderful feeling. So right. that also I think helps you in your, in your professional life. Sure. Yeah, so for me, I personally, it's been like, I'm uh, nearing the end of my PhD and I don't want to be in academia. So uh, I, uh, I'm looking at uh, scientific publishing as one of the potential career uh, paths that I would like to take. And because I'm here on a visa I'm, and the fact that I'm in grad school, like as a full-time student, like internships are a no and no un like paid, unpaid positions, nothing. They don't let you do anything except volunteering. So... I think this is like the best I can get in terms of the experience to show this as like experience. Like this is a good, this is a very well-known platform and I've been here as editor. And a few people that I did talk to who are like currently working as editors in different journals also say the same thing. They say, um, having no experience uh, is fine. Like can, candidates are going to be considered, but if you do have experience, it's definitely going to be you, you are going to have an edge over like others. And then that said, I think at a personal level now that I'm like starting to like write up uh, my own research and I also have to like talk about it while I go out and network with people working in like different companies and maybe even different positions. I feel like all of this experience, especially writing and editing uh, with Club Sarah is like helping me even like articulate uh, my own like return like even if I have to write like a paragraph about the kind of research I'm doing I feel like it's much easier now and even writing up my own work I'm able to like think from uh, the reader's perspective better so that way it has been uh, very enriching for me personally. Uh, I would also like to add something to this I have started my career now as a freelancer uh, since the last two years and Club Sairai has helped me immensely by giving me a discipline in my life. I do not work just as science illustrator, but also as a normal digital illustrator for other kinds of branding and other stuff. So in all the in between all the work, sometimes it happens that I my passion lies in science illustration, but sometimes I do not get time, or maybe I'm so lost in other projects that I do not do any science illustration work. But Club Sairai has helped me to stay focused, to keep me bringing me back on the track of science illustration all the time and it has also have introduced me to a lot of other people with similar interests i have met some great illustrators here learned a lot from them have met a lot of editors who have helped me uh, shape my illustration better and have taught me that how i can uh, make it more uh, and uh, more uh, uh, explanatory to say and also, apart from all these, we have got a lot of projects because of Club Sairai. So we are very thankful for the to the Stempies for that. And yeah, that's uh, I think I have. Uh, I'm really grateful for Stempies. That's amazing. That's great to know. Uh, Rupsha, do you want to have one? Yeah, I think I think my uh, computer is giving me ultimatums yeah. when I talk too much. <laughs> Um, yeah, sorry about those blackouts in the <laughs> before, um, but um, yeah, so I, 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 I'd like to um, 
add to what Disha said. So I, I've been freelancing in the past five uh, four years uh, as a scientific uh, editor and writer for manuscripts. Um, and um, although there is a flexibility component of being a freelancer, there's also a huge uh, unpredictability about it. So th sometimes I could be swamped with work, sometimes I might have nothing. And Club Sire has really given me that sense of stability because there's always work. Club <laughs> with Club Sire, there's no downtime really. Uh, and that, that, that really helps uh, uh, me keep going because if my, um, if, 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 and, and especially during the lockdown as well, uh, when things are all uh, uh, so uh, uncertain and stressful, um, Club Sire uh, um, gives me, um, uh, and I look forward and so it's, it's uh, to have more I think we have to try to see uh, is that uh, with the pool of uh, talent we have in um, can you hear me? <laughs> yes, now it's better. <laughs> I think it was like very, you were being cut off a lot, but now well, it's better. <laughs> now it's better, yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, so I think um, just having uh, all the, this amazing community that we've built uh, in Club Sarai, including those who have been part of Club Sarai, uh, I think now we, we need to, see how uh, we can um, reach out to uh, large uh, to say different layers and um, to high school students to universities uh, in India perhaps and um, how we can bring all that we have learned during this journey uh, to a broader audience and and I think we have to also start thinking about how we can sustain this platform how we can keep the good people that are in it and how how we can keep them here instead of have people just come and leave uh, and and that's really what we have to start thinking for the future but um, we do uh, we are thinking of uh, workshops and write-a-thons uh, that we can open up to say the stem peers community and these are directions we are thinking in uh, for the future I'm not going to say anymore. My computer will shut me up. <laughs> I think it's only when you start talking the first time you breathe. Uh, but no, this is, uh, it's been wonderful. Like I have always been very intrigued about Club Sairai, how it works, what has gone on, what goes on behind the scenes. And it's been great. And one of the things that has been, that's always resonated and we've been hearing a lot during these celebrations is that how STEM peers as a community and the different initiatives have just helped in people finding their niche, help them in their professional development, and not only just have brought people who wouldn't know each other, but much more closer to you forming personal relationships with such people. And obviously it has helped tremendously in your professional development, on your career growth, and knowing and helping, or as uh, Disha said, like just making you more organized or like giving a more structure in your life. But Club Sarai has done so much. And from whatever you said, all your, the writer form that you have planned, then the internships, the, uh, co the Cosmos series, I'm sure this, and there's so much to look forward to. So I thank you all for taking this time. I'm sure everybody who's watched this uh, has, knows about much more about Club Sarai what they can do to be a part of it. And in case somebody wants to have this as a professional, as a profession, what they should start working on or how, how they should go about it. Yeah. So, yeah. Thanks so much. Uh, I Thank just you. wanted to add that, you know, um, whoever is listening, please follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, wherever you can and share our articles. That way we can attract more talent and also retain them for longer. So, and you know, whoever wants to write, just write to us and we will publish your articles if it's, you know, if it's worth publishing, but sure, we invite more articles. <laughs>
<laughs> we just want more engagement. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks so much, Sohini. And no, thanks thank you, you all. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shohini. This was wonderful. Thank you to all of you. It's been a great Thank one you, hour. Thank you, Sohini. It was a great experience. Yeah. Bye. 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 Bye.